Snowdon, the highest mountain in Wales. Scarfell Pike, the highest point in England. And Ben Nevis, the highest in Scotland. Three peaks that form the backbone of a race that pits man against himself and the most daunting of elements. The peaks lie along the western coast of the British mainland. 92 nautical miles separate Snowdon in North Wales and Scarfell Pike in the English Lake District. A further 235 miles up the coast, Ben Nevis completes this imposing colonnade. Eighteen years ago, the distinctive geography of this area sparked the imagination of two doctors, Rob Hayworth and Mervyn Jones. We realised that the highest mountain in Wales, the highest mountain in England, and the highest mountain in Scotland are all very close to the western seaboard. And we thought that we could start off from Barmouth and sail up the western coast of the British Isles, stop off in little harbours and climb each mountain in turn. And then Mervyn Jones said, wouldn't it make a marvellous race? The Three Peaks race was born. This year, 16 yachts, each carrying a team of five, three crew and two runners, set off from Barmouth in Wales. There are two classes of yacht in the race, 12 in the monohull class and four in the multi-hulls. Ahead lies a non-stop challenge of 389 nautical miles of sailing, 75 miles of running and a total climb of over 11,000 feet. During the sailing, the teams will have to overcome any seasickness and snatch their precious moments of rest and recuperation in the most rudimentary of conditions. Strong southerly winds speed the fleet along the first leg. From the start, the multi-hulls prove to be the fastest in the water, with David Southard's 35-foot catamaran Jeanette building an early lead. The first port of call is Carnarvon in Wales, and after 62 miles and almost eight hours at sea, Jeanette is the first to deliver her runners. Before they can set off, race marshals check that all the teams are carrying the prescribed survival equipment. Ahead lies a run of 24 miles to Snowdon and back, and a climb of over 3,000 feet. Eighteen minutes behind are the runners from Trivial Pursuit, an F-27 trimaran, while the first monohull to arrive, Robo Babe, is already nearly an hour and a half off the pace. As the leaders battle through the darkness, they're aware that a fast time is necessary if their yachts are to catch the tide at their next port of call. further down the field at least have the benefit of daylight for their climb to the top of Snowdon. Five hours after their arrival, the leaders return to their yachts. The Trivial Pursuit team has now overtaken the Jeanette runners and built a 25-minute advantage. And the race is on to beat the tide at their next destination, Ravenglass. enter the Menai Straits, the winds begin to drop. The runners may have been expecting to rest, but they're rudely interrupted by a call to man the oars. Motors are only allowed to be used in harbour, and missing the tide at Ravenglass will mean a delay of up to nine hours. two-mile leg, Jeanette has managed to retake the lead from Trivial Pursuit. These are two of only six yachts to arrive at Ravenglass in time to disembark immediately. The rest will just have to wait until the tide returns.
Although faced with the 32-mile return run and another 3,000 feet climb, this time up Scarfell Pike, the runners can take it relatively easy, knowing that the low tide keeping the stragglers waiting outside the harbour will also delay their departure. Two now, want to go. Once again, the Trivial Pursuit team of Pete Gilbert and Eddie Nicholson are able to make up ground on the Jeanette runners. Philip Hawley and David Grace are delayed as David begins to suffer. The partner's uh, terrible stomach pain, so it's when we're coming down. Just over seven hours later, Trivial Pursuit have retaken the lead, registering a much faster time on the run. But they have to wait another couple of hours before the waters return and they can sail away. By that time, the other teams who made the first tide have caught them up, and the leaders leave together. And after sitting outside the harbour for nine hours, the rest are just beginning their run to Scarfell Pike. As dawn breaks on day three of the race, Jeanette proves herself once again to be mistress of the waves and retakes the lead. At 235 miles, the passage to Fort William in Scotland is the longest leg of the race, and the crew of Trivial Pursuit strain every sinew to keep within sight of their quick arrival. For Jeanette, Ben Nevis comes into sight after 39 hours at sea. She arrives at Fort William first to give her runners a 27-minute lead over Trivial Pursuit. Once again, the ailing David Grace struggles to keep up with his partner, Philip Hawley. And once again, Trivial Pursuit are gaining ground fast. Final grueling leg, a return run of 18 miles and a climb of over 4,000 feet, Gilbert and Nicholson overtake the Jeanette team to finish in just under four hours. Their total time, three days, five hours and one minute. <laughs> to the delight of their team skipper, they won the race by six minutes. <laughs> No words describe this. This is pure elation because this has been a team event and around me I've got the team that's made this event. We won this event due to team practice and team preparation and because we got it together at the time. Some people did some things better than other people but we got it together all of the time and won the event. <laughs> 